This is the painting I'm, I'm working on at the moment, so I'm, uh, I'm about to recreate this now. Um, and the way I work is by painting off the, the previous painting. So there it is. Here's where I'm working from, and I'll uh, I'll just draw that up now. So here we are. I've uh, I've drawn up the painting. This painting here. Again, making slight alterations now. It's based on a, uh, a, a two-point perspective, and the way I've achieved this is simply by attaching just a piece of string to get my lines accurate. Simple two-point perspective, so all the lines correspond all the way across. Dead easy. And the, another point to watch. I mean, this is getting into drawing. Is just just checking the ellipses on the on the three different levels I've got on the wine bottle. But uh, the, the drawing will tighten up as the uh, as the painting progresses. And off we go. So that's the first wash in the pink. Um, you can see it sort of <coughs> overlaps into the uh, foreground here. I've got a lot of gaps I've left here which you'll see why. There's the pack of cards and we've made some inroads into the wine bottle um, establishing a first line of contrast oops it's still wet. A first line of contrast down here which becomes important later on. Okay, the next wash going on top of the pink, wash number two, is going to be a green. Um, always test my washes. The only thing that's really important at this point is that uh, it's darker than the previous one, which is the basic essence of watercolour. So we have a tonal value of one and a tonal value of two. Okay, so that's that's the second wash on. Uh, it's a bit tricky to see at this angle, but that's the green. As you can see, it's um, sometimes pure on its own, and sometimes it's covering the previous wash of pink. What I'm trying to do here is really work on these contrasts. This is an important contrast here between wash there and the wall you can see it on the picture there it's come into the wine bottle so we've got a lot of that wine bottle green now but we need to go back and, and look again at this tonal values it's really important I've just written this out here so the pink wash was wash number one sorry Let's start again on that. The Nord is the paper, it has no washes. Pink washes number one has a tonal value of one. The green wash is number two, because it's darker. It's a second wash, and combined with the pink wash, it has a tonal value of three. So that's where we're up to now. We've got three, four different tones. So we've got pink on its own, the green on its own the pink plus the green and of course we've got the white so actually have four tones immediately established with two different colours <clears throat> right so I put the third wash on now so we're starting to get a lot more depth and that wash is this blue here wash number three so our maximum tonal value now is six We've got six tones with three washes. I'm just going to run through a couple of them um, closer up. So with the blue we've got a tonal value of three, the green a tonal value of two, so when they're combined we've got tonal value five. This is tonal value six because it's got everything together, pink number one, Green number two plus 
blue number three. Here where we've got the pink and the blue together, that's tonal value four, three plus one. Okay, so here we are, we've done the uh, the fourth tone, fourth wash, so that has uh, a tonal value of four, and that wash, what I've got from my test paper here, is this purple here, it's quite a dark purple, and let's take a look what's happened. So, this has a tonal value of four, which is lighter than the blue and the green which has a combined to tonal value of 5. When you put the purple on top of it however, that has a tonal value of 9. But here's the darkest tone because it's got all four, because it's got the pink on two. It's got the first, second, third and fourth wash. Tonal value of 10. When it goes on top of the blue, tonal value of 3 plus a tonal value of 4, so that's got a that's got the value of 7 so that's darker than that obviously so you see you start building up all these these values which is uh, at the risk of repeating myself, I don't think I've said it today, is why watercolour should be called water tone not water colour because colour is irrelevant so there's the, the finished piece and the final wash I put on was this um, brown in here. So I'm giving that a tonal value of 5. So there's our darkest colour, tonal value of 15. Let's give you some more examples. When the brown goes on the blue, blue has a tonal value of 2, brown 5. So there's 7 when it's on the green and the blue and the brown, that's a tonal value of 10 and on and on, so somewhere in that, I'm not going to go through all of these we have the lightest tone being the white at naught the darkest tone being the, uh, the contrast here 15 to 2 because <laughs> the, the green has a tonal value of 2 um, so that's a contrast. So we've got everything from, from 0 to 15. <clears throat> and in theory, and I'll say this a million times over, any of these paintings should be able to be uh, scanned, photocopies. If you just photograph this, put it in computer and turn the colour down, it should work in black and white just as well as it works in colour. And that, that's the sign of a good watercolour painting. So I think my... That, that is a finished piece, um, don't know what I'm going to call it yet, probably blow it up onto a larger piece of paper at some point. hope you've enjoyed that and, and uh, you know if you've got any questions just put them in the comments box and I'll uh, or give me an email at info mjforster.com or just get in touch, I'm happy to help.